Welcome to Electron Line. Here again, we're hoping to get a better understanding of what phasors are. So let's go ahead and again represent a sinusoidal function by its graphical representation. We realized from, last, from the last video that the positive cosine is to the right on the positive horizontal axis and the positive sine function is in a downward direction on the vertical axis. A positive phase angle is from the horizontal axis to the vertical axis and a negative phase angle is on the horizontal axis to the negative vertical axis. So here we have a general format of the equation where the voltage as a function of time is equal to the maximum voltage times the cosine of omega t plus the phase angle. And as an example, we're going to let it equal 5 times the cosine of 40 t plus 20 degrees. So from this, we should be able to interpret the amplitude, the phase angle, the angle of frequency, the frequency in the period, and we should be able to draw that function on our graph right here. So first of all, the amplitude, well, the amplitude is the number in front of the function right here, so it would be 5 volts, and yes, the units are volts. The phase angle here is going to be a plus 20 degrees, so that would be 20 degrees, and the units there is degrees indeed. The angle of frequency, well, the unit there would be radians per second, and it's the number in front of the t, omega. So that's equal to omega, which is equal to 40 radians per second. And so that would be the units for angle of frequency, radians per second. Now the frequency, well, it turns out that the angle of frequency, omega, is equal to 2 pi times the frequency, therefore the frequency is equal to omega divided by 2 pi. If you go ahead and plug that in here, omega divided by 2 pi, we then have 40, that's equal to 40 radians per second divided by 2 pi, that would be 20 divided by pi, and the units now become cycles per second. So that would be 20 divided by pi equals, that would be 6.37, 6.37 cycles per second. So a cycle would be one complete cycle on the oscillatory function. And then finally the period, which is defined as 1 over the frequency, which in this case is equal to t, and that would be equal to 1 divided by 6.37 cycles per second. Cycles per second. I don't know if I spelled that right here. There we go, cycles per second. And so if we take the inverse of that, we go, that would be equal to 0 0.157 seconds. That would be the period. So one complete cycle in this particular example would take a little bit more than 0.15 seconds. Now let's go ahead and graph that on our graph right here. First of all, the amplitude is 5, so that would be a distance of 5 away from the point right there. So we can draw a circle and let the radius of the circle represent, so the radius of the circle represents the amplitude. In this case, that would be equal to 5 volts. Next, the phase angle, positive 20 degrees, that would be from the horizontal positive axis, 20 degrees up, like this. So if this is equal to the phase angle, equal to 20 degrees, then you can see that we can actually draw this, and I'm looking for my red pen, there we go. So if we're going to draw that, that would be represented by this. So the length of this vector here, that's equal to 5 volts. The direction is 20 degrees above the cosine of omega function, and that will then properly represent the phase angle and the amplitude. What about the omega t? What does that mean? That means in a time of 1 point or 0 0.157 seconds, this vector will rotate all the way around, and get to the exact same position as before, so the time elapsed to make one complete cycle will be equal to 0 0.157 seconds. And if we take any portion of that time, then you can see the vector will be in different places. And that's what we mean by a sinusoidal voltage, means that the amplitude will continue to change, will go from zero to maximum to zero to ne negative maximum and so forth. And you can see that at this particular snapshot, when time is equal to zero, this is the current location on the graph of this particular function. 
when t equals to zero, it's five times the cosine of 20 degrees, and that's how you would then um, uh, represent it. If you now add 2 pi to that, then you would again come back in the exact same position. It would be everything, so then you would plus 2 pi, and since it's a repeating sinusoidal function, you'd be in the exact same location when omega t is 2 pi greater than it is in this particular case. And that's how we graph that.